Hello and welcome to the Bramble Patch. Uh, my name is Wendy and today on Technicals we've got Alicia. First of all we'd like to say thank you very much for all the uh, positive feedback we've had from you and we are so pleased to, to know that you're enjoying the tutorials we're doing for you. Uh, if there's any products that we use during the tutorial, there will be a link uh, uh, put on the Facebook page uh, that you can click and follow to our website so you can look at the products that we've used. Uh, just to let you know, we've got lots of fun things lined up for you with the tutorials, very varied selection, so please do keep watching and if there's anything you want to know, please don't hesitate to contact us and we will get back to you on any of the things you want to discuss. So today we're going to be looking at uh, doing a binding, whether it be on a quilt or a wall hanging, and uh, we're going to start right at the very beginning. So first of all, we're going to talk you through and show you how to calculate the fabric that you need to work out to buy for um, a, a binding. So first of all, if we were going to be doing a quilt, for instance, that is 80 inches square. So all four sides are 80 inches. So first of all, in the calculator, we'll put 80 times by four equals. Okay, then we add 20. So the 20 is for the 20 inches we allow for going around corners and for the overlap, overlap when we do the joining. Okay, and then that equals 340. We then divide that by 40, and the reason we divide it by 40, uh, the width of a bolt of fabric is approximately 42, but we need to allow for salvage, so we call it 40. So we divide it by 40, and that will equal 8.5. So what we need to do is round that up to the next figure, so we'll call it 9. So we clear the calculator, and we put nine, and we're going to put the width of the fabric we're going to cut for the bindings. Now we always use 2.5 inches, so we need to put in 2.5 times 2.5, and then that equals 22.5. So therefore we need 22.5 inches of fabric to bind your 80 inch square quilt using a two and a half inch binding. So that's how you do your calculation, okay? So what we're going to do next is we're just going to look at how we actually cut the binding. So I've got a piece of fabric here, um, and this is just actually um, folded over. So it's actually folded. I've got four uh, thicknesses of fabric, okay? And I've got them so they're all level at the top here. Okay, uh, they're all pressed so they're nice and flat. It's really important to have your fabric flat. So first of all, we're going to cut with a ruler, which you've probably all got a, a ruler of some sort. Doesn't matter whether it's this size or not. So first of all, what I've done is I've actually laid my fabric on my cutting board so it's nice and straight along one of the markings on my board. And I put my ruler and I then I actually just move that over to the left hand side. Now I am right handed, so therefore, if you're right handed, you have your surface fabric to the right hand side. Likewise, if you're left handed it, you have it to the left hand side. So what we're gonna to do to start off with, we're always going to tidy the edge of the fabric up. Even if this is a piece of fabric that's just come off the bolt, um, it may have uh, stray fibres on it, it might not be quite straight. So let's just actually level that up. And I'm, what I'm doing, I'm actually going to put the, one of the markings, the lines on the ruler on the bottom edge of my fabric. And I've also got my ruler on the lines on my cutting board. Um, I keep my fingers at least half an inch in from the edge of the ruler that I'm cutting with, okay? That way we can't have any mishaps. We don't want to take any flesh off your skin and we certainly don't want to be cutting our nails. I tend to have quite long nails and I don't want to cut them with a rotary cutter. Um, I tend to have my fingers uh, spread out quite well uh, because you can actually put more pressure onto your ruler as you go. So I'm locking the rotary cutter and always push. I'm going to have to move this board because it's catching on the edge of the, of the uh, camera. 
There we go, that's better. So I've locked my rotary cutter and I'm pushing. And if I can't do, if I don't feel I can do the full run without the ruler moving, I just walk my fingers up, making sure once again, they are tucked inside the edge of the ruler. And I always uh, retract the rotary blade and lock it every time I stop using it. If I happen to reach over and catch my wrist on it, I could cut myself, I could knock it on the floor. If I'm at home, I might not have any shoes on, or you could knock that into the cable of your sewing machine, which you may have switched on. Uh, so, and we always promote uh, safety in all of our classes with our students. So once I've done that, all I'm going to do is just remove the piece of fabric that we've cut away. And now I'm going to do exactly the same again. I'm placing the ruler on. I'm just very, very gently moving it over. And I'm going to put my two and a half inch line on the edge of the cut fabric. And I'm also putting the line along the bottom edge. Once again, push away, walk, push. Okay. And now we have, thank you, Alicia. Uh, now we have a perfect two and a half inch. Okay, so that's the way that most people cut them. Uh, I do tend to use something called a shape cut. Um, it's uh, a really good cutting aid. I use mine all the time. So this is the one that I use. This is a June Taylor shape cut. And this is the, I like this one because this has got the half inch increments on it, which means you can, you can actually do a quarter of an inch. That means uh, you can do bindings, sashings, cornerstones. I make charm packs. I also use this for cutting my papers for use, uh, for use in English paper piecing. Okay, what I do uh, when I've got a blade that's a little bit tired, um, for cutting fabric, I will remove that and keep it. And if I want to cut my papers, I'll put it back into a rotary cutter and use that because I don't want to blunt my fresh blade with paper. So this is the June Taylor um, shape cut and it's made for left and right handed people, people. So once again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to place that on. I know I've got a fresh edge, but I'm just going to make out that this is just a, a piece of fresh fabric. So on here, if I had it the right way around, that's for left-handed people, there we go. So on here, um, it has like little teardrops cut out of it, okay? Starting at zero, and then there's one without a number, and then we go one without two. So the ones without are the half inch increments. So I'm going to place this, so I've got the black line at the bottom of my folded fabric, and I'm just gonna slide that along, but I'm actually going to cut a nice fresh edge to um, the fabric. So when you're using this piece of equipment, if you take your rotary cutter and lock it, if you hold your rotary cutter at a slight angle and drop it into the little tear piece that's cut out, and just push all the way up. Now, you don't move your ruler. I want to cut these strips two and a half inches wide. So therefore I'm going for the slot between the two and the three, which is obviously my two and a half. And I'm going to push. So two and a half plus two and a half is five. And then we go to seven and a half. And then we go to 10. So I'm going to remove the shape cut, thank you Alicia. And now all I'm going to do is remove the piece of fabric I haven't cut, like so. The edge, the first edge that I tidied up will just come away. And now I have perfectly cut two and a half inch strips. And this is the rule that we use when we cut um, the bindings in the quilt room, uh, when we um, bind customers' quilts. After we quilted them, we bind them and do a full bind or a part bind. And that's the piece of equipment we use to make sure we get everything absolutely accurate for them. Okay, so we're just gonna move those out of the way now. And what we're going to do, we're going to move on now to actually doing the binding. 
So I started this one already because I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to. Um, oh, first of all, I need to join strips. <laughs> there we go. Right. So first of all, we're going to join the strips for the binding. Okay. So what we need to do is lie. Let me get the edge on there so you can see it. Lie the first piece down right side up and then we'll take the second piece and we're going to lay that right side down. Now you can tidy the edges up but I'm going to leave it like this so you can see how you can do it like this. Okay. So all we need to do is we're going to sew from this corner across to this corner. Now if you want to you can pin it here and here don't pin it too close to the centre because otherwise the foot of your machine will catch it. Or you can actually draw a line. Or if you're quite confident, you can just sew right the way across. I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm just going to sew straight across. You will be able to see my stitching because I've got brown threading at the moment ready for the next part. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just stitch straight the way across. like so. Now, as you can see, I've got the row of stitching across. And if I open this up, that is one continuous strip, like so, okay? So all we need to do is now just trim this off, okay? Thank you. So using your ruler, I'm placing the quarter of an inch line on my sewn line. I'm just going to trim. Now as you can see that will open up beautifully it's just one continual strip. Now the reason we do this on an angle rather than cut it straight is because what we need to do we need to um, press this seam open so that um, we're not getting any bulk. Okay now you can finger press it. You can use one of these handy rollers Okay, and we just press this out. These are really handy. They're brilliant if you're doing blocks to say you're getting up and down. Okay, or obviously you can use an iron. So that now, when this is folded over, because this needs to be pressed in half, wrong sides together, as you fold this over, it will eliminate the bulk. Because what it's doing, it's taking one one way and one the other way. If you do it with a straight line, you get a ridge on it and it's actually quite prominent, it shows. So this is the way to do it. So once you've done this, all you need to do is just nip off these little ears here. Like so. And then you've got a perfect seam on there. And now that's ready to go. So all, that, all you would do now in preparation for putting your binding on, is actually fold it wrong sides together and press all the way along. Okay, so I've got one already prepared. And I've started to put this one on already because I want to make sure that we've got enough time to cover everything. Okay, so what we need to do, I've got this pinned as well as you can see. Let me move that pin. So all we need to do is lay the cut edge to the edge of the quilt or the wall hanging. Okay. So it's the top of the quilt that is facing up. Okay. So it's the right side of the quilt. And we're going just to lay the open edge towards the side of it. Here we go. So you need to make sure, you can do still a quarter of an inch if you want to, but a little bit wider is, is generally a little bit better, but make sure you don't do your seam too wide, otherwise when you roll the binding over, it won't cover the stitching that you applied the binding with, all right? So here we go. 
So I'm going to stitch away to the, along to the edge now. And I'm going to talk you through this so you can see exactly what I'm doing as we go. So I've just got the edge of the foot on the edge of the fabric. I'm just sewing along. Now, what we need to do is we need to stop uh, sewing the width of the foot to the edge of the fabric so that we leave a gap. So it's best to actually check it as you go along. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to spin this round and if you can see here, there's too much fabric left here. So it means I've got enough to do one more stitch. So I'll swing it back round again. And I'm just gonna do one stitch. Now, if I want to, I can swing it back and just do another check. And that's looking good to me. So, oops. So what we can do now, um, you can either reverse stitch a couple of times or you can just sew the end in, okay? This is just gonna sew the end in and actually cut the thread for me. I've got a different machine in with me today. Okay. So, here we go. So these, this is the raw edge, this is the folded edge here, all right? So all we need to do now is take the binding fabric, we're going to fold it up so that the edge of the binding is level with the edge of the quilt that we're working on. Okay, then we're going to fold it back towards yourself and make sure that the folded edge is on the edge of the quilt just here. And what we need, we need this edge to be on the edge of the quilt and the, the folded corner here needs to be sitting directly on the other folded piece. If you've got in an angle it won't mitre quite as well. Okay, So we just need to hold that there. You can pin it if you want to but I don't generally. I just take it straight to the machine and just sew away. So I'm just going to speed along now to the next corner so that you can actually just watch that once again. Now this piece that I'm actually doing might look a little strange at the moment because it looks unusual, let's just say that. Um, but this is something you, if you watch any more tutorials, you will see further down the line when I've done something to it. So it's a matter of watch this space. Right, so I'm approaching the end once again, the edge once again. So I'm going to slow down a little bit now. And I'll just spin that around. Oh, that's looking good, I like that. Okay, so I'll sew the end in. Oops. And once again, let's just watch how we do this corner. So we're going to take the binding, we're going to pull it straight up so you've got a continual line from the edge of the quilt all the way up to the binding. We're going to fold that back on itself like so. I've got the folded edges sitting on top of each other here. I've got the edge here. Don't be too generous and have that overhang, otherwise you'll get a bulky corner. And that's all sitting on the side beautifully. So all we need to do now is carry on sewing. Right, so 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to sew down now. And what I need to do is leave a gap um, of about 10 or 12 inches. So we've got plenty of room to manoeuvre to do an invisible joining. That will do us nicely. Okay, right, so this is the part we're going to work on now. And pins. Pins. Okay. So here's my pins. Right, so with this, I don't use a ruler at all. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, first of all, is to check where the joining is and see which way the mitre runs. Oops, sorry. Right, so the mitre on the piece of fabric that's already been joined, okay, is going from the seam towards the right-hand side, okay? So that means um, I want to actually use this one to work with to start with. So first of all, I'm going to lay this piece on and I'm going to trim it so it's about halfway between the open gap. So just roughly. So just lift that off and just cut that with a straight snip there, like so. Okay. I'm going to place a pin in the actual quilt top, right? And the reason I'm using these pins is so that you can see the heads quite easily. I'm hoping you can see this quite well. All right. So that pin is just sitting at the edge um, of the binding. It's not in the binding. I'm taking the other piece of binding on the other side, and I'm just going to lay it over the top of it, like so. The piece of fabric that you cut off is an important piece of fabric because that is our measure. So if you do choose to use your, um, do your bindings two and a quarter inches, it's exactly the same because it will measure it for you. So all I'm going to do is lay um, uh, the piece of fabric that was cut, I'm going to open it out, okay, and I'm going to lay that on the top of the binding. So I've got the edge uh, in line with that pin, just there. Lift that top piece of binding up here and trim. And that's the measurement done for me. Really easy. Now, as I explained, this is the piece I need to be working with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift this piece up, the binding, and I'm going to open it out flat with the right side facing up, okay? And I will take the second piece of fabric, open it up right side down, and just slide that over so it sits right on top of it. So the corner meets up there, like so. And I am going to pin, again, not too close to the center because I don't want the foot of the machine knocking the pins and disturbing it. And pull that over, like so. So that is how it's now sitting. So what I need to do now is sew from this point here, the corner, down to the corner underneath the bottom one here. So I'm going to sew straight down here. Again, if you want to um, draw a line or put extra pins, that's fine. Okay, straight over to the sewing machine. And here we go. So I'm just going to lower my needle into the corner to make sure I've got it held exactly where I want it to be. And I'm just going to go nicely straight the way across. I'm going to remove that pin straight the way across to the corner. Mm 
Okay. So, here, I'm hoping you can see the stitch line here. Now, I never cut anything off until I've done a test run. So all I need to do now is just let that fall down, pull that, and I'm hoping you can see that's gonna fit quite nicely. So what I need to do now is just take this, making sure you've got the binding fabrics here, and these are just the two triangles here that we want to cut off. Obviously you can uh, do it with a rotary cutter um, if you want to, but I just generally trim like so. Very important, press these open. We again, we want to distribute that bulk over the different areas. And this is where, this is brilliant. I actually always use my roller to encourage that to stay where I want it to be. Thank you, Alyssa. Pull that over, and all we're going to do now is to sew again. Now, this is where I stopped sewing, but I'm not going to put my needle directly in there. I like to backtrack about three quarters of an inch, sew over the same stitches I've stitched and all the way along, and once again, I don't stop at the uh, first stitch, I will over sew uh, probably half an inch or three quarters of an inch, just to make sure that everything's anchored together nicely. So let's take that back to the sewing machine. Okay, so I've lowered that into the section where um, the stitching already is. And I'm just going to, that's it, I've done that part now. And now I'm just sewing along, straight the way across there. Now, if you can see here, this is where we've stitched all the way across. This here is our invisible join. And if we roll that over, you can see we've got no bulk. It's all lovely and flat. We've got no puckers. We've just got a stray thread there, that's all. And that's it. So all that remains now I do generally like to press this out. You can use your roller. I like to press it out and I leave it about a quarter of an inch from the corner and then press this out. It just encourages it to sit over nicely. And then when we roll it over, I do like to use the little wonder clips. And then as you stitch that, that will stitch just over the uh, sew line that you've actually um, used to attach your binding with. So that's how you do an invisible joining uh, on a quilt, okay? Uh, the other thing that we have is um, a different type of binding. Um, and now I've got the wrong color thread in, but I think we can probably, should we just use that? Okay. So this, as you can see, this, let me turn that over so you can see better when I the colour. This has very unusual shaped corners. They are not uh, 90 degrees, okay? So they are done using the same method, okay? And what we're going to do now is, where are we? Here we go. So I'm going to carry on sewing along, and once again, I'm going to stop. Uh, the width of the foot before I get to the first corner, even though it's not a 90 degree angle, right? Once again, I'm stitching over the stitches that are already there. And here we go. Thank you. 
Now, you can see, because this has got a different color thread in it, here is the corner. So on this occasion, what we do is we are going to pull the binding back at an angle once again, so this is all in line. And then we pull it over, like so. Now, we're going to start stitching about a quarter of an inch in, because on this one, because it's such a small corner, I don't want to actually um, encourage any bulk. So I'm going to stitch from here across. And as you can see, we've got another corner very, very close. Okay. So here we go. We go in there and we're going to start sewing. Right, now I'm hoping you can see here, this is where we've sewn. And this now means that when we roll this over, like so, and this one, we're going to get a, a lovely mitered corner on the back edge as well. Just the same as we would on an ordinary 90 degree one. So all we need to do now is just do this corner and we'll just go along here. So, fold the binding up so it's straight here, back down, like so, straight into the sewing machine. And there we go. So that now will give us the two mitered corners on that different shaped edge. So I won't join that because we're running out of time today. So um, I'd like to thank you for joining us. So thank you for joining myself, Alicia, and from the rest of the Bramble team, thank you very much and look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you for now. Goodbye. <laughs>